Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today we are going to talk about the books that I read during the second half of the month of December. This year in December I did Vlogmas and I wasn't sure how much reading I was going to get done, but I surprised myself. I read seven books in the first half of the month and four, five, and six more in the second half of the month. So 13 books in a month is an average reading month for me. And I'm pretty impressed with myself that I was able to complete that many while still also doing Vlogmas. Amazing. It helped that I had a long car ride. And a couple of these I listened to on audiobook, quite a few of them I listened to on audiobook. But something else fun I was doing during the month of December is that I was using this jar of picks from my patrons during the year, throughout the whole year of 2021. Every month I meet with some of my patrons on a Zoom and we, I allow them to choose a book for me to read. It can be a book that they've loved, a book from my shelves, any kind of a book. And I picked out 10 of them through the month. So the ones that I did complete, some of them I've already talked about. So let's see. At the Scent of Water, I talked about at the beginning of the month, and I will link my mid-month wrap-up down below. I am not going to be talking about those books here. Most of them have gone back to the library. The Memory Collectors by Kim Neville. I loved that. Read it at the beginning of the month. Why the Sky is Blue by Susan Meissner. I read at the beginning of the month. Sherwood by Megan Spooner. Read that at the beginning of the month. Let's see. These are all unorganized here. The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter. So the first five that I picked out in my December TVR video, I read all five of those. Then for my patrons, I picked out a few more on video for them. And I will talk about some of them right now. I first picked out Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. And I read that during middle grade March and absolutely loved it. So Lee, my Australian friend, suggested that one. And Lee, I read that in, in March. So I didn't have to read it this month. And then there were three I did not get to <laughs> out of this stack. Uh, three more that I did not get to. So I did pick out The Other Westmore by Westmore. Barbara recommended that one to me. And I would still like to read it someday. It just didn't happen in December. Uh, also, The Gown by Jennifer Robson. Kim T, my book twin in Canada, she recommended that one to me. And I do definitely want to read it. It is, uh, Jennifer Robson is one of the four authors that I really want to get to in 2022. So the gown is very high on my radar. I just didn't get to it in December. And then the third one that I did not get to, I actually, I have it out, checked out from the library. And then I realized I actually have it on my shelves as well. But Jewel recommended this one, August Isle by Allie Standish. And I did start this one when I was at home at my mom's for Christmas. And then I read it a little bit more since then. I'm about 70 pages into it. Um, so this is staying on my January TBR on my radar. I actually could return this to the library though, so it doesn't get overdue. But I am in the middle of that one. And the other one that I'm in the middle of is actually the one that I picked for December. But, um, or that I picked maybe for November. I don't remember when I picked this. But I picked everything I need to know I learned from a children's book by edited by Anita Sylvie and this is just a collection of of essays from different authors and actors and other people <laughs> I'm not really sure who most of these people are but they all talk about a children's book that they read when they were younger and the impact that it made on their lives I definitely want to continue this I kind of forgot about it to be honest it got lost in the mess of my shelves during Christmas time when this room was like a Christmas bomb because all of my boxes and everything from the attic were all over this room so I forgot about that one so I will probably renew that and continue to read that uh, because I would like to continue that one and Amy recommended that one for me the last two, though, I did read, so let me talk about those right now. I read In a Book Club Far Away by Tiff Marcello. I was thrilled to read this because it was a book of the month book that I had received in March of 2021. This was my choice. I ended up giving this one three stars. In it, we follow three friends who are army wives. Actually, one of them might have been in the army. They had been in a book club and they were very, very good friends. And then for some reason they had been estranged. And so eight years later, there's an event that brings them all back together. And we kind of travel back and forth in, in time through the past to like learn about how they all got to know each other and this book club that they were a part of. The book club was a very minor part of it, but it is the 
the vessel that brought them all together. Um, and then in the present day timeline, we learn about why they're estranged and what their li what has happened in their lives since then. I did feel uh, as much as I enjoyed it, and I listened to it on audio, and I and I did enjoy the audiobook of it, and I was invested all the way through. I didn't feel like it was super slow, but I did feel like it kind of wrapped up really quickly after eight years of not really being in touch with each other. And the the thing that happened was kind of glossed over by the end, like, okay, it's in the past, let's just forget about it kind of a thing. But you didn't forget about it for eight years. Why are you all of a sudden able to forget about it? I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't really love how it all came together at the end, but I was invested in it and I thought it was okay. It did give it three stars, but this one will not be staying on my shelves, on my book of the month shelf, because I don't think that I would ever read it again. So I'll pass it along to someone else. Let someone else enjoy that one. The final book that I pulled out of the jar, which unfortunately all of these are now going in the trash. <laughs> I'm going to start fresh for 2022. But the final book that I read was another Amy Harmon. And I was so excited to read a fantasy from Amy Harmon. I love some some authors get their niche writing and they just kind of write the same event or not event, but like like Pam Jonoff writes all World War II historical fiction. Amy Harmon has jumped, I've read three books from her now, and they have all jumped all over. One of them was World War II set in Italy. One was like um, wagon trains heading west in America back in the day. I don't remember, 1700s maybe. And then one was, or 1800s, and then this one was a fantasy. So a fantasy world, kind of taking a lot of influence from Norse mythology. I listened to this one on audio while I was driving to and from my mom's house at Christmas time. I listened to a lot on audio during that trip. In this one, we follow Bear. He is raised among the keepers or the monks of this kind of world where we're set. And he has incredible strength because his mother, when she was dying, blessed him using these runes that are kind of only supposed to be used by the keepers of Salok, this land. But somehow the mom knows because of the, her, the situation that she finds herself in and the the father of Bear doesn't want to acknowledge or accept responsibility or marry her, she curses the land with no females. She's like, no other women are going to be hurt the way that I've been hurt. So now, from now on, this land will only, women will only be able to have sons. Um, Bear is her son. She blesses him with strength he has kind of superhuman strength. He's raised by the keepers or monks. And as he gets older, there is a girl child. These The people of this land kind of steal women from other lands because there's no women in their land. And he is given the responsibility of protecting Alba, who is the first girl child in this land. Um, so we kind of meet a lot of the side characters surrounding this. I thought the story was very engaging. The characters were very well developed. It did take me a minute to get in into the story. Uh, but once I was in it, I was in it. And I really, uh, really, really loved it. I just really like Amy Harmon's writing and her storytelling, the way that she develops her characters. They feel real. They, they even though this was a fantasy and there's a lot that's, you know, not real or super believable. I mean, it's a fantasy. It's magical in a way. Um, but I loved the tie-ins that you could kind of tell with the Norse mythology. I'm not super familiar with a lot of Norse mythology, but I could feel that kind of Viking-esque characters that were involved, that were in this one. I just, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, I think I will read anything that Amy Harmon writes. She is definitely a favorite. <laughs> this one, I believe, does have a sequel now that I'm interested in reading. The second second born son or something like that, that I definitely want to read. I just thought this was great. It had a lot of adventure and mystery and conflict of there not being any women and, and a little tiny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny touch of romance. But it was sweet. I liked, I liked it all. I liked it all. <laughs> I have two books that I read because it was the holidays. <laughs> The first one is one that is on my was on my anticipated reads and my net galley, and that is Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan. I really loved this book. I thought it was sweet and heartwarming and heartbreaking a little bit too. In this one, we follow Megs and her little brother, who is her little brother has a heart condition, 
and he has read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and it definitely, like, is desperate to know where did Narnia come from. Megs is a student at Oxford at a time where not all of Oxford admitted females, so she was in one of the colleges that allowed females to come, but C.S. Lewis at the time was teaching at one of the other colleges, so she kind of stalks him a little bit uh, so that she can find out for her brother where did Narnia come from. Well, C.S. and his brother Warney are just so heartwarming and wonderful men and they kind of accepted this girl and started to tell her stories of their lives growing up. She's like just she's very she's a studying mathematics and so she's very analytical and she just wants the answers and they're kind of telling her this meandering story that's going to give her the answers in the long run or beyond the answers like more about what she needs rather than just the straight answer. So she writes down all the stories that C.S. Lewis and his brother Warney tell her. She brings those stories back to her brother. And kind of the the importance of story is such a huge theme in this. And I really loved that. I also loved the family. I loved Megs and her brother and their relationship. I loved how her parents it, it accepted and challenged Meg in, in a time where women were not necessarily pushed in the mathematics realm, but that's what she loved and was really good at. And they encouraged that in her. I just, I loved learning about C.S. Lewis's life through these stories that he was telling. And then she was going home and telling these stories to her brother as well. I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. And it was very wintry. I mean, there's a wintry scene on the cover, but it did feel like a perfect wintertime read. Very sweet. Patty Callahan has done her research. She also wrote Becoming Mrs. Lewis, which was the story of C.S. Lewis and Joy Davidson and their pen pal friendship and how that blossomed into more. Uh, so, and now this is another story where C.S. Lewis is a prominent character and I just thought it was lovely. I just thought it was so lovely. Um, and the other Christmassy read that I read was a book of the month as well, The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. And I just thought that this was so fun. It was just the perfect time, perfect book at the perfect time for me. This is a sweet, clean romance. There is not any bedroom scenes in this one. We follow these two sisters, both who have baking as a big part of their lives. One of them stars as a host in a reality baking competition show, and the other runs the family bakery in their Northern California home. Uh, so one there it takes place in California. Um, but the one uh, on the baking show one day slips and falls or somehow she gets knocked out and gets a really bad concussion. And the concussion makes it so that she cannot smell or taste anything. And so she concocts this scheme where the two identical twin sisters trade places. And that's what happens. Um, there are two men introduced at the very beginning of this who are the worst. <laughs> They're just awful males. And I was really nervous that when they switched places, these two men were going to be the love interests. And they were not. So I was pleased about that. It does require you to suspend belief a little bit, suspend disbelief a little bit, because there it, it's just a little crazy to think of these adult women trading places and the decisions that they make while in the while pretending to be their sister. It just it, it doesn't always line up with reality, what would really happen. But that's the fun of a holiday read. I just thought it was sweet and fun. And I loved the two men that became the love interests. I loved all the baking and the food and the cookies. I just thought it was so much fun. It was delightful. I loved it. I did listen to this one on audio as well, but I could see myself reading this again at Christmas time. I thought it was sweet. Very fun. I think I gave it four stars. Um, I read I read another book from my net galley because I was on a road trip and I looked through my net galley. I'm like, you know what? I can get the audiobook of this one, The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. And this one was gifted to me last year by Sharon, uh, one of my friends, subscribers. Thank you, Sharon, for this book. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I did not love this one. I did give it three stars. I thought there were uh, there were some good things about it. Beth O'Leary has also written The Flash Hair and The Switch, both which had a sweetness and a charm about them that was lacking in this one. This one was a little more serious, a little more rough around the edges, a little, a lot more swearing, a lot more um, content that I just didn't care about. The two men that were in here was a, a slight love triangle situation. And both of the guys I did not like at all. So I was not rooting for any of the relationships in here. These five people end up smushed into a mini to drive to a wedding in Scotland from from somewhere in England. 
which I've driven in a mini before. I cannot imagine five people smushing into there. No way. <laughs> Uh, so a super close environment, a lot of tension between all of the different characters. So we're following them as they road trip up up north in the UK. And I did appreciate some of the little sidetracks and stopping at the gas stations. Like the road trip aspect of it, I thought was funny. There were some humorous moments. It felt like a road trip. <laughs> um, just the tensions that were in the car and the way people were looking over their shoulders and like the smushed in the back seat and accidentally touching and all like just all of these things felt like a like a road trip and I, I did have fun with that part of it but as we learn more about the backstory and we keep getting these flashbacks of of history between all of these people and I just didn't care I, I was a little annoyed that there was a lot of language in here I was a little annoyed that it just didn't have the charm of the other two books that's what I was hoping for and it didn't have that so I was pretty sad about that. Gave it three stars. It was okay. I don't think I'll read it again. I am keeping the other two Beth O'Leary books, but unfortunately I think I'm going to pass that one along. But I am glad that I read another Neck Alley book. <laughs> then the final book of this wrap up is Amor Tolls, The Lincoln Highway. Oh boy. I really enjoy Amor Tolls writing so, so much. There was a lot that I loved about this book. I did not love that I took too long to read it. I feel like it's a chunker and I spread it out a little bit too much. <laughs> I was buddy reading this with Amanda, but Christmas got in the way and being out of town and other books and just other things. And we probably both of us can say that, that we took a little too long with it. I think at first I was excited to spread it out and kind of savor it a little bit, but I think that deterred me from giving it a full five stars. I did give it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, in this one, we follow a, a handful of boys. <laughs> Emmett had been sent to this boy's home for a year, um, was released early when his father passed away. And he has to go and be the, he's the only family member left to care for his younger brother, William. Actually, Billy was my favorite, the youngest character. He was so wise beyond his years. He had this collection of adventure stories that he carried around everywhere with him and referred all kinds of other things back to this book that he, he had. Um, the side characters were super interesting. When Emmett goes back home to collect Billy and take care of the, their home, uh, they decide that they're going to go on a road trip down the Lincoln Highway to California, where Billy is convinced that's where his mom went. Their mom left years ago, and Billy's convinced that she went to California. Let's go find her. Well, soon after he gets home, Emmett discovers two of the guys that he knew from the, the boys' home, Salina boys' home, showed up at his house, and they have different ideas of what they should be doing. They want to go to New York City and take care of some unfinished business, and yeah, things just, the plans that Emmett and Billy had made go awry, let's just say that. So we get to hear from four of the main, four boys' perspectives, and then every once in a while, Sally, one of Emmett's friends from his hometown, we get to see her perspective as well. So we do kind of jump around from perspective to perspective. I thought his writing is beautiful. There are quotes here and there throughout the book that were just stop and make you think quotes. There was one character that I didn't really care for that much. I didn't appreciate his decision making and the reasoning behind it. I thought he was interesting, though, even though I didn't like him. <laughs> I thought his character was very interesting. I did not love how some of the storylines wrapped up. Yeah, it left me, I don't know, feeling like strange at the end. Like sometimes you 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 finish a book and you're just like, oh yes, that ended really well. This one ended and I was like, whoa, really? That's that's where we're gonna leave it. <laughs> so I I don't it took me a while to decide on four stars and to even just think about wrapping this book up because it left me thinking a lot, which can be a good thing. I definitely am interested in reading more from Amor Tolls and I actually could see myself reading this book again. Even now, knowing how things end, I feel like I would not mind reading it again. There just was a lot of things that were woven together in a really cool way. Yeah, I, there, was a, there was a lot to love in this book. I definitely am a, am a fan of Amor Tolls. I'm definitely a fan. So these are the five plus The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon that I finished during the second half of the month of December. I am... <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with that. I would love to chat with you about any of these books, especially Lincoln Highway. If you have read that already, let's chat about that one. Let's just chat about these books or anything else you want to talk about. I always love talking with you down in the comments. 
And that is it for today. I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.